Next, we have the function f of x equals 10x cubed divided x squared minus 1. And we're going to consider that on his domain. Of course, what is the domain of this function? Well, the only issues that this function has is that uh, the denominator can become a 0 at 1 and minus 1. So for the domain of the function, we have to consider the real numbers uh, minus the minus 1 and 1 um, numbers. Now this function consists of an odd function on the top divided by an even function. The product of a or a quotient or of an even function and an odd function is going to produce an odd function. Therefore, the graph is going to be symmetric in the origin and whatever happens on one side is going to be flip on the other side in a similar manner. Now, if we use the quotient rule, we're going to get um, the first and the second derivatives, and we're going to get that the first derivative here is going to be 10x squared times x squared minus 3 divided by x squared minus 1 squared. And the second derivative, after a lot of factorization and simplification, is 20x, x squared plus 3 divided x squared minus 1 cubed. I suggest you that if you want to uh, see how you get to this, uh, you do it on your own and you reach and simplify to these results. Now, uh, the solution of f prime equals zero occur when the numerator is going to equal to zero. So when is that going to happen? Well, it's going to happen with either x squared or x squared minus three is going to be zero. That means that x is going to be 0 or x is going to be plus or minus the square root of 3. So those are going to be my, um, my zeros, but I also have the possibility of uh, having critical points in minus 1 and 1, since these are the points where the function is not defined. So that's going to give me a quite large uh, number of critical points. In the case of the solution for f2 prime of x equals 0, it's going to be a little bit more simple because the top is only 0 when x is equal 0. So that's the uh, main candidate to be his um, inflection point. However, we still have minus 1 and 1 as possible candidates for inflection points as well. Now, <clears throat> Notice that the sign of uh, the first derivative is um, going to be um, given by the factor x squared, x squared minus 3, since x squared is always positive. So this is not going to produce anything but a positive number. Uh, this is also going to produce a positive number. So to check what are the signs, we only need to check what happens with x squared minus 3. Is this positive or is this negative? That's going to influence the whole behavior of this. So um, with that in mind, um, this is going to be negative on minus the square root of 3 to, to 3, and it's going to be positive from minus infinity to minus the square root of 3 and 3 to infinity. Hence, it's going to be decreasing on minus the square root of 3, uh, comma, square root of 3, less the, the points minus 1 and 1, and it's going to be increasing on um, minus infinity to minus the square root of 3, and of course the square root of 3 to infinity. So um, we can also uh, see that using a table uh, for the second root depth. Notice uh, we're going to have 20x x squared plus 3, which is always going to be positive, and uh, we have x squared minus 1 cubed. And so that the multiplication and interaction of these things is going to uh, pretty much give me the sign of the second derivative. I have from minus infinity to minus 1, and uh, that in 20x is going to be negative, and minus 1 to 0 is also negative, and is positive after 0 onwards, as is to be expected x squared minus 1 uh, cubed obviously is going to be negative from minus 1 to 1 and it's going to be positive for a number that is larger than 1. So the multiplication of this, notice um, 20x times x squared plus 3 divided by x squared minus 1 cubed is going to give me a negative sign in minus infinity to minus 1 
is going to give me a positive sign in minus one to zero is going to give me a pos a negative sign from zero to one and then a one to infinity in um and one to infinity is going to be positive so notice we do have changes um of a sign between the different intervals so minus one is going to be a change in concavity minus one is going to be an inflection point zero is going to be another inflection point because we have change of concavity at zero as well and in one we do have a change in concavity as well so minus one zero and one they're all three uh, inflection points now uh, summarizing this um, I can take all the intervals so from minus infinity to minus the square root of three from minus the square root of three to minus one to zero to one and to square root of three and to infinity and I summarize how they behave in all these intervals so for example um, f prime is going to be positive from uh, minus infinity to minus the square root of three um, with uh, the second root being negative here so it's going to be increasing but concave down uh, we're also going to have that from minus the square root of 3 to minus 1 I have that the derivative the first derivative is negative and the second derivative is also negative so it's going to be decreasing and concave down and so we're going to have this behavior similarly we can analyze um, what's going on uh, in here uh, notice that uh, minus one and one, uh, they give the impression of being um, uh, inflection points, and they are because there is a change in concavity. But since they are asymptotes, um, that's the reason why we we have the change at all. Um, and zero, we do have an inflection point that we can see clearly, where um, the function is changing from being concave up to concave down, and um, notice that we have a local maximum at minus the square root of 3 and a local minimum at the square root of 3 uh, with the information that we're obtaining. Um, both are critical points, minus the square root of 3 and the square root of 3. And it turns out that here we have a second derivative being negative, which indicates a local maximum. And here we have a second derivative being positive, which indicates a local minimum. And here we do not have changes in the sec in in the first um, in the first derivative, but we do have a change on the second derivative, uh, meaning that zero it is an inflection point after all. Now, after doing that, we can evaluate the streams and um, the inflection points uh, just to check how they are and um, to obtain values on the y-axis to finally be able to graph. So if I uh, plug in square root of three, I'm going to get a one. And if I plug at uh, minus the square root of three, I'm going to get actually minus 15 over the square root of, times the square root of three. Um, F has a local maximum in X equals square root of three, which gives me that uh, 15 square root of three. Um, and uh, these results obviously are backed by the second derivative test. If I check the asymptotic and, and behavior by taking the limits, turns out that when we go to uh, minus one by the left, it's gonna go to minus infinity. If I go by one to uh, the right, then I'm going to get minus infinity as well. And if I go to uh, minus one either by the uh, left or uh, by the right, I'm going uh, minus one by the left uh, side is minus infinity minus one by the right side is infinity and then in one by the left is minus infinity by the right side and one is infinity so um with that i can uh, talk about now of uh, checking this the intercepts with the x and the y axis and the series of rational function are going to coincide with the series of the numerator uh, since this all also not the series of the denominator then um, we can uh, find the situation of those of those points. Notice uh, the only crossing with the x-axis and the y-axis is actually going to be the inflection point zero. And um, notice that there is a difference on the numerator on the denominator of one. 
this is a rational function with difference one so this is going to have a slam asymptote and that's precisely what we see here on the graph um, this line here is the slam asymptote y the y equals 10 x um, of course you probably remember how to get the slam asymptotes uh, from um, the discussions on limits so make sure that if you have that as an area where um, the difference between a numerator and denominator is just one there's a big chance you have this as slam asymptotes here we can see the local maximum, the local minimum, how they are. Uh, notice that they are just local and um, they cannot be defined as the absolute maximum in there. Another function that we can analyze is the function e to the minus x squared uh, and draw the graph. Um, this function is going to have domain on the real numbers and it's always positive. Um, this function is also odd because if you plug a negative or a positive, they're going to be the same thing. Um, if I get to use the chain rule in here, I can calculate the first derivative and the second derivative, which are as displayed here. f prime of x is minus 2x e to the minus x squared, and f to prime is twice e to the minus x squared times 2x squared minus 1. This is just going to give me a couple of critical points. Uh, this function is only going to produce critical points where um, x with f prime is equal to zero of or do not assist. Uh, but because the exponential is always positive, then that matters only for the point x equals zero here. So that's going to be my only critical point. And I can check uh, behavior of growing in the in in the cane on minus infinity to zero and zero to infinity. In uh, minus infinity to zero, since f prime is going to be positive, then we can say that increases on that um, interval. Notice that it's really easy to know um, that that's going to happen. Just plug any uh, negative number and you're gonna get a positive quantity. And that's gonna tell you how minus infinity to zero behaves. On the other hand, um, you can also have that uh, this is going to be negative for when uh, we're moving into zero to infinity. Uh, the, f uh, the first derivative test saying that we're going to have a local maximum at zero in f of zero, since uh, notice that uh, we we can we make a transition from growing to decaying, so this is as here is going to be a maximum, a local maximum. Uh, now, when we take a look at the second derivative, f to prime of x is going to be zero when x is equals plus or minus one over square root of two. And uh, these are my candidates for inflection points, um, <clears throat> but I also need to consider that um, there's not a denominator here. So uh, I'm not going to have points where it doesn't assist. Similarly for the first derivative. And uh, making an analysis of uh, the changes in concavity, we're going we're gonna to see that from minus infinity to minus 1 over square root of 2, and from 1 over square root of 2 to infinity, the function is going to be concave up because the second derivative is less than 0. Also, it's going to be concave down in the interval minus 1 over square root of 2 to 1 over square root of 2 because uh, f2 prime is going to change sign at those particular endpoints. And um, we're going to actually have inflection points on those. So this is the summary of the situation uh, from minus infinity to uh, minus 1 over square root of 2 we have that the function is increasing in concave up, then it turns, um, it continues now to being uh, concave down and increasing, then after C is decreasing in concave down, and um, after that is decreasing in concave up. So notice that this looks like a bell, and exactly this is going to be um, what's going to produce. Notice uh, the absolute maximum is going to occur at zero, and it's going to be one, and we're going to have the inflection point in minus 1 over square root of 2 and 1 over square root of 2. This, of course, is very related to the normal distribution, and that's the reason why 
um, it looks like a bill. Finally, one last example here, uh, just to check on um, other type of possibilities, we have the function f of x equals 1 over a x to the 2 thirds uh, times 9x squared minus ax minus 16 on his domain. Notice that this has no issue at all, so the domain is going to be the real numbers. Uh, we don't have a special symmetry at all because uh, we don't have a relationship that can tell us, yeah, this is odd or this is even. If we compute the first derivative, we're going to get the function x minus 1 times 9x plus 4 over 3x to the 1 over 3. Um, so obviously this is going to have the two types of critical points where uh, it's undefined, which is at x equals 0 in um, at 1 and at minus 4 ninths. Those are the three critical points that I have. So I can explore what happens on those on those points. So I split from minus infinity to minus 4 over 9, from minus 4 over 9 to 0, from 0 to 1, and from 1 to infinity to check what are the, going to be the signs of this and so be able to uh, classify what is the sign of the first derivative. Now, um, with that in the belt, I can check um, the 9x plus 4. For the most part, it's going to be positive, and it's only negative from minus infinity to minus 4 over 9. Uh, the opposite happens with x minus 1, which is always negative for the most part, except uh, from 1 to infinity, as you will expect. And at 3x to the 1 over 3, uh, is something that is going to be negative on the negative numbers and positive on the positive numbers. And so that can be translated to the overall sign of the derivative, which is going to be negative from minus infinity to minus 4 over 9, positive from minus 4 over 9 to 0, negative again from 0 to 1, and positive again from 1 to infinity. So the summary, the summary of that behavior here in terms of concavity uh, is like this. So we have uh, decreasing in concave up from minus infinity to minus 4 over 9, increasing in concave up from minus 4 over 9 to 0, decreasing in concave up from 0 to 1, and increasing in concave up from 1 to infinity. Now I can plug a couple points um, to check more information on that. I can always do the second derivative, and notice that the second derivative is going to have uh, 45x squared minus 10x plus 4 on the top and 9 over x to the 4 thirds on the bottom. And uh, thanks to that, uh, the critical points are very well defined and it's going to be minus 4 over 9 and x equals 1 is going to correspond uh, to the local minimum. Uh, f of 0 is going to be 0 for uh, this given function and if f is increasing just to the left of 0, and decreasing just to the right by the first derivative test, we're going to have that uh, we have a maximum at x equals 0. However, we do not have an absolute maximum here. And so this is how uh, the graph is going to look. Notice uh, the situation where we have the two possible local, max local um, maximum and uh, where we have the local minimums here uh, going on. Okay. So this is going to be the end of uh, this couple of examples. Uh, for the last um, video of this section, I'm going to make a full example on the board of how to obtain uh, the graph of a given function using these techniques.